Hey everybody, Gary Fong, and I got a lot of questions from friends of mine who are wondering about this GameStop thing, um, and so uh, there's you know a lot of confusion. I think it would really help if you guys understood what the basis was, because I think a lot of you only know that <clears throat> there was a res edit thing, and a bunch of Wall Street bankers got wiped out, and they're moaning and groaning to Congress to you know uh, stop this app called Robin Hood from you know destroying their thing I think it's absolutely hilarious that it happened and um, so this is you know this is about I love that the app was called Robin Hood this is about you know us kind of sticking it to the one percent because <clears throat> I want to tell you about stocks and <clears throat> and the way they work and I want to just kind of preface that by showing you some really suspicious stuff like for example um, I'm going to show you the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, and this starts with, um, let's just say, you know, 2019. If we look at January 1, uh, 2019, for some reason, you know, it, it dropped right there, right? But then it climbs, like April 1 of 20, we're already in the lockdown, right? So why is it climbing? Uh, Starbucks are closed down, restaurants are closed down, it's everyone's stuck at home. And, and uh, why is the, you know, the index rising? It keeps rising by, you know, July, it's all the way up to 27,000. And it keeps going up. So as of, you know, today, the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is at over 31,000. So look at the difference that it made, like literally since the lockdown took off. Is there, you know, weird disconnect? So I'm going to show you some of the causes for the disconnect. Um, so I'm going to go to the historical components of the <clears throat> Dow Jones Index. And one thing I want to show you is that it's, th it's called the, the 30 industrials, right? So what they do is they take 30 large companies and they use that as kind of an indication of how the economy is doing, I guess. Um, the problem is, is that the, the companies that are in that golden 30 keep changing. And here we go. Let me just show you right here. So August 31 of 2020, they dropped ExxonMobil and Pfizer and Raytheon Technologies Corporation were dropped from the average. Now, a lot of times companies get dropped from the average simply because they're not performing. And they're saying, you know, this company doesn't really... Uh, you know, the Magnavox doesn't really reflect how the economy is really doing. So we're going to put in Facebook and then Facebook's got this number. And then all of a sudden, this is a way to jack up the index because the components of the index are actually the duds are taken out. So let me just show you what happens. Like this happens all the time and none of us like really know about it. Like on April 6 of 2020, United Technology Corporation was dropped. Um, and then uh, on April 2, 2019, Dow DuPont was dropped. And typically this happens after there's quite a fall. Uh, General Electric was dropped from the average. And whenever they drop one out of the 30, they bring somebody new in. So you look at this and you say, okay, well, who are going to be the golden 30? So it's, you know, 3 in 2018, it's 3M, American Express, Apple. I mean, we can talk about what happened to Apple stock. And I think I will. I'll talk about Apple stock. But let's just kind of go ahead and zoom down here. And I want to, I want to ask you if, if, you know, you really know of any of these, these companies. Like October 30, 1985, Inco Limited. Uh, ever heard of it? How about Sears Roebuck and Company? Wow, that did great. Man, my, my uh, stock in Sears just really soared, right? So, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Um, American Telephone and Telegraph, Bethlehem Steel Corporation. These companies, if you had the stock, you would have been wiped out. So this thing talking about this index that's constantly going up historically, and let me, let me take you right back to where we were on that, I think. Yeah. So if I, if I go back here, and I think I put it on, let's put it on 10 years. And we'll take a look and we'll see, you know, 10 years ago, wow, holy smoke. Well, we were down at 12,000. But imagine at 12,000, if you hung on to those stocks uh, on January 1 of 2011, where you would be, you would have been completely wiped out. So this is a very, very misleading indicator. But what it does is it instills market confidence. I want you to remember about this thing about market confidence because 
this applies to everything. It's basically just like you believe in it, you invest in it like Bitcoin or, you know, uh, whatever. It's, it's confidence. This is a confidence game. We just ask ourselves, if you're going to be betting on stocks, doing common sense doesn't really work because this is all kind of rigged. And I want to teach you how the system is rigged. So there's companies that are hedge funds and they basically do what's called creating financial products. And they can create financial products for everything. They can create index funds. An index fund might mean the Dow Industrials Index. You know, let's bet that that number keeps going up. And literally it's like, hey, Joe, do you want to bet that it's going to go up to this? And hey, Fred, do you want to bet it's going to go up? Other people bet down and so, you know, you wind up with this index fund where people are buying and selling based on confidence or pessimism. And pessimism makes stocks go down. Confidence makes stocks rise. Now, so these purveyors of financial instruments, they get commissions. They get um, a commission on whatever they invent. And they invent everything. They invent what's called a volatility index. It's just like, oh, oh we're going to give a number to how much the stock gyrates, the stock market or one stock or whatever. We'll call it a volatility fund. And we'll take your money here, we'll take your money there, and then we will all bet, just like Vegas. I think it's going to go crazy. I think it's going to go nuts. I think it's going to go stable. In a volatility index, if it goes stable, you get kind of killed. So what happened in GameStop is so funny, and I can't wait to, not a lot of people know how it wound up working, so I want to direct you to a movie called Trading Places. Now, Trading Places was a movie where these two superior white men, they were brothers, um, I forgot their names, but uh, it was Ralph Bellamy, just fantastic movie, Eddie Murphy starred in it, and they had this argument where their um, success was nature or nurture. Basically, are you born with brains and, and capability or is it that you're groomed, you know, to to grow up in country clubs and hobnob with all these uh, people and, and therefore is how you become successful. So they take one of their own guys. They bet a dollar on this, right? And um, it's kind of racist because the one guy says, you know, he's black, he'll never get anywhere. And so they take their own guy, uh, Dan Aykroyd, uh, who's, he's just kind of like a prick, you know, he's, he's, he's all about the trappings, all about the, uh, you know, the watch and the Amex black card and things like that. No, I don't, they didn't have the black card back then. Uh, but anyway, um, and so he's, he's very high snooting. He's going to get married to the society bride and, and everything like that. And they take Eddie Murphy, who's just a homeless beggar on the streets. And they say, you know what we're going to do is we're going to uh, swap them around. So they go up and they approach Eddie Murphy and they say, how would you like to be a, a fund manager at this, at this you know, prestigious firm? And they give it to him thinking one of the brothers, one of the you know, trading brothers, thinks that because he's black, he'll, he'll completely flop. And uh, the other one says, no, I think that we can develop him into a winning trader. <clears throat> well, guess what? Andy Murphy becomes a winning trader because he understands how put options work and, um, uh, and, and selling short stocks. So he also knows that this, uh, the, the brothers have this very, very crooked trading firm where there's inside information. He gets wind of that. And he knows that they're going to short a stock on a certain date and time. He also knows that if he can get the stock to go up and these uh, snooty brothers bet that it's going to go down, they'll get wiped out. And in the end, they get wiped out. And <laughs> there's this echoing part where, you know, the guy's just going, sell, Winthorpe, sell. So if you want to know what happened in GameStop, and you want to laugh at some of these fund managers that got their asses wiped, uh, check out Trading Places because you'll know exactly what happened to uh, GameStop. So here's what happened with GameStop. These fund managers want to do a mechanism called a short sell. And uh, what they do is, you know, they have this fund, lots and lots of money in it. 
And they say that we think that GameStop is going to go down. Well, of course it's going to go down. It's retail stores in malls that you go in and buy, like, games. When everything right now is game on an app, game, you know, online, online streaming, right? With multiple players and everything like that. Why would you go to a p publicly traded company called uh, GameStop? And, uh, and do you think they'll have much of a future? So everyone on all these funds got together to bet that it was going to go down. <laughs> these guys on Reddit uh, found a way that all of us little people, with, you know, 10, 20, $60 could buy uh, shares of GameStop and actually make the shares go up. And how, how you make it go up is just say, hey, listen, uh, you know, this thing, this Gemaflagy here, uh, it, it's only worth $4. And someone comes up and says, I'll give you five for it. Like, five? Hell yeah, you got it. Someone comes up and says, I'll give you six. Jeez, the market value is, you know, whatever, but... GameStop was, was trading really, really low. Now, here's what happens when you bet against a stock. I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm the hedge fund or whatever, and I go up to, uh, let's just say, let's just do it. Hmm, how do we do it? Like friends, okay? So I go up to Bill and I say, hey, Bill, I would like to um, have a contract with you that I will take GameStop now, but I won't pay you back until a month from now okay so okay he says i'll give you hundred dollars all right for one share okay so you got, you got your hundred dollar share but he hasn't paid yet he's going to pay him in 30 days does that make sense so i got my hundred dollars i can do whatever i want but i don't have to pay him back for the one share of GameStop until um 30 days that's called a contract um, that's called a you know a short sell or whatever an option option uh, doesn't matter you know what these are called puts and calls and and all. I will tell you about margin calls because that's what happened in trading places and that was so dang funny um, and that's what happened to these guys that got wiped out and are continuing to get wiped out so here's what happens if I've got the hundred dollars and in 30 days I've got to pay back the share that I have, right? So I have the share, but I haven't actually bought it. I just have the right to do whatever. I have to buy one share in one month. And that's the contract. Okay, uh, here's the share. It's right now, it's $100. And, you know, you, but you need to pay me back in one month. So, okay, I will pay you in one month, one share at the market value. This is why you bet against it. Because if I have this $100, I sell it for $100. Now I've got an outstanding balance with, you know, my buddy that I got to pay him back for the share that I just sold. So I sold it for $100. And then in a month, if it goes down to $20, i have made $80 in a month. Okay, so that, that is how you make money when a stock goes down. Here's how it can go completely wrong. If the stock goes up, your liability is unlimited. Let's just say, for example, that in the case of, you know, uh, GameStop, I think it went from, I don't know, $10 to $500, okay? So um, this guy's holding this, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, your 30 days is up, it's now $500. Well, poof, wait a minute, you know, it was $100 and I thought it was going to go down. Right, but you bet wrong, so now it's going to go up, now it's $500, and you're like going, uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> wow, I've just lost $400 in a month. That, and, and when the guy says, yeah, you've got to pay me now, that's called a margin call. Like sometimes they can say, you know what, let's extend the contract, You're hoping that it'll go down. But in the case of GameStop, it went straight up like crazy. And so what happens is with unlimited, with unlimited exposure, let's say, for example, you were a hedge fund and you bought like 100,000 shares at five dollars okay so you're like oh I got you know and I sell it for five dollars and I say ha ha man in 30 days I'm only gonna pay the guy back 40 cents and I've just made you know four dollars and fifty cents I hope I'm not losing you but because I just kind of changed the change the numbers but the the bottom line is, is I got the stock I can sell it I just don't have to pay the guy I don't have to buy shares and reimburse him for the share that he now lent you so um, so say for example you know 
you buy it for a very small amount, but then it goes up like 20 times. So if I put $100,000 in, in one month it goes up 20 times, now I'm in for 2 million bucks, and a margin call says, pay up. I want my shares back, pay up right now. And that's the right now part that completely screwed everything up. So what these guys have to do is they have to buy the shares. They have to buy the shares. And so they have to pay it back, wiping out, I forgot how many billions of dollars the hedge funds got wiped out. But what I think is so funny about that is because these guys have been sticking it to us for years. They really have. Because when you bet that a stock is going to go down, guess who gets hurt? The little guy, the little guy who had the stock. And it's like, well, you know, yeah, um, shoot, it's going down. I, I got to sell it, you know. So they sell it and then it goes up. The little guy's completely out of the game, right? So just imagine you've got a bunch of uh, hedge fund investors or you know, these really rich people that, that control, you know, tens of millions and maybe hundreds of millions of dollars worth of funds. You think these guys don't all just kind of message each other? So here's what happened with ResEdit. Someone got wind of that. I said, hey guys, let's all get together on GameStop and let's just like buy it up because I'm sure those rich guys are going to short it. They've been shorting like all kinds of stuff that, that's been going down. Things that you would think would go down in a pandemic like I think movie theaters, AMC theaters, and there, there was a number of them that it was pretty easy to tell, you know, that there's opportunity to be made when the uh, economy collapses. Lots of opportunity because you buy all the shares from these people who are panicking that they're going to, the, the stock is going to go down. So they liquidate their stock. So these greedy rich guys say, you know what, uh, I'll, I'll take that off your hands, but I'll pay you in 30 days. I'm like, okay, as long as you take it off my hands. And then bang, it's like, hey, 30 days, you know what? I'm going to give you a fraction of that, right? So there's all kinds of opportunity to be made when things go down. In ResEdit and with that Robinhood trading app, the Robinhood trading app allowed you to do small somethings with commission-free. Anyway, it allowed millions of working Joes like you and I to go on the app and, you know, buy buy up ResEdit, uh, buy up uh, GameStop and make the shares go up. What wound up happening is these guys were left with unlimited exposure. Uh, I think they call it like naked exposure. But you're really, if you want to just have a lot of fun, man, and, and see how uh, the little guy, uh, it's quite a racist movie, you know, because oh, Eddie Murphy's black and it's funny. It's really funny. But, um, but uh, if you want to see a movie that, that kind of shows how you, you can stick it to people, uh, this is how to do it. And this is really the great equalizer. It's all of the little people coming together and saying, hey, I know these hedge funds call each other up. I know they do coordinated strikes. I know that they all agree that we're going to build stuff up. And then wham, we're going to hit it and cha-ching. And it's guaranteed money. Now, with the internet, you've got all these people, common people, who now know the game, who say, hey, we're going to go in and we're going to wipe these guys out. So you know what those little did they went to congress and they're like oh my god please help us we're getting wiped out so they tried to legislate again and they actually did they had an injunction against the robin hood software because they didn't like that they were losing money just like they had stuck it to us for such a long time to me this is a massive victory um because there are powers that be that are completely taking advantage of all of all of us out here right and um but now it's, it's, it's kind of turning back and, and there's this really nice kind of buildup of people becoming aware of, hey, that doesn't seem right. Let's kind of, let's, let's talk about this in the corner. I think there'd be guys trying to be generous. You know, the variants and, you know, you know, you know and, and all these people just kind of get together and they talk. And then they say, let's do something. Wham! And then they go stick it to the big guys. So um, that's what's going on. Wanted to get you in tune for that. I don't know why. Hey, a lot of people have been asking what's going on with CAA document version 6 and all that. My thing is I don't want to be a slave to YouTube. I care about the popularity or whatever because that would be a horrible thing to let go. Oh, I got to keep my numbers up and all that. Man, when you start to do that, it, it gets kind of wacky. 
I just do what I feel like I wanna, I'm excited to talk about. And what I'm excited to talk about is this new thing. So those of you who have listened um, <clears throat> all this long time, I'm going to be interviewing people that have asked me questions because, um, and I think I've got one next, I'm bad with, with dates and times, but I have one from a, a university student in uh, Italy that's going to be coming up, and she's going to ask me a number of questions about guidance and intuition, um, making the right decisions as a young person, and we're just going to put it on Zoom. So one thing I'd like to extend out there, for any of you out there, is put in the comments if you want to have any kind of, you know, worldly advice about you know, because I've been through everything. And I'm, if I have a skill, uh, it would be storytelling. So I can take things that are just kind of like whatever and, and turn it into uh, cool stories. I had a really great attorney that uh, represented me in a federal jury trial. The guy was an amazing attorney. And I just watched him. I watched him like work the jury and not work the jury, but, you know, um, just... Basically, and I sat down with him. I said, my gosh, what makes you such a good litigator? And he says, you know, I was a public school teacher for uh, many, many years until I decided that I was going to go into litigation. And I said, yeah, so what, what exactly made you so excited about going into litigation? He said, because I get to tell stories. And, you know, I was telling my children this. There's one skill in the world that will enrich you more than anything else. And, you know, you go, well, what is that? Education? Is that, you know, whatever. That skill is the ability to tell stories. Because I don't care who you are. If you're an attorney, you tell a story. If you're a car salesman, you tell a story. If you're a, um, if you're a screenwriter, you tell a story. Um, everything is about can you tell a story? Because the ability to engage someone to get them to be interested in the topic. My God, that CIA document was 29 pages of hooey. But um, it spoke to me. I figured it out. I thought, you know, can't wait to... Uh, whoever wants to sit by my campfire will hear about the CIA document, what it says. And that's what's going on here uh, in this channel. So that's what you'll see. Uh, a lot of people are going, hey, this used to be a photography channel. And what happened to that? And this is like, well... Um, you know, when there's really cool things that come up in uh, photography, I'll talk about it. But man, Sony killed it with the A9. And once I held that thing and 20 frames per second with no image blackout, animal eye auto tracking, I'm just like, I don't know, what do you want? Like, do you want a thousand frames per second? You know, it's like with insane autofocus. Um, they, uh, they're constant. They've come up with so many different new products and everything like that, and, and each one is, is quite amazing. But I think when they hit, they did mirrorless, and they went to the A9, and they just completely killed it. I was like going, okay, the, an A9 is all I would ever need. Not for, you know, like uh, broadcast cinema, different cameras for that, but just, you know, as a still camera. And as a, as a pretty good, you know, broad, uh, video capture camera, sure. But anyway, so that's, that's why the, the topics vary so much. It'll go to Shanghai, which is what I'm extremely excited about. It'll go to things like GameStop. I'm <laughs> going, oh my God, these guys freaking killed uh, the big index funds. And, you know, I mean, there's people who are just like, oh my God, I can't fly my jet now. <laughs> so um, that to me is fun. So anyway. Thanks for watching, and um, again, in the comments, can you please, if you have a question, say, I'd like you to interview me for a Zoom call, let's do it. Let's bring you on, and let's, let's have a talk. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.